I have to hold this steering wheel to the right the whole time. As soon as I let it go. Jeez, it's pulling me right off the road. I better pull over. Oh, man. That pull is dangerous. We need to get this thing in the studio and check it out. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. So we just got this truck into the studio. You saw exactly what was happening. We had a pull pulling us to the left. Now there's gonna be a couple different reasons why this might happen. One of them starting with the front end, whether it's a tie rod or a ball joint or something like, or maybe even it has something to do with the brakes. Either way, it's really great because 1A Auto sells all these parts. Let's get into it starting with the front end. Now to check the front end on this vehicle, of course you're going to want to make sure you have hand and eye protection at all times. Aside from that, make sure the vehicle's on a nice flat level surface and either use the emergency brake or use some wheel chocks on the front and the back of that rear wheel. It's only going to help ensure that the vehicle can't shift on you while we get it up in the air. Now of course we're going to start with a jack and we're going to slide right underneath the lower control arm on this and start bringing up the wheel approximately one to two inches, just enough to get under the front. All right, so let's slide this under here. We can start jacking it up. Ooh, something that I want to mention on this lower control arm, just above where I have this jack, you can tell that the control arm's actually slanted a little bit. And if I was to jack it up in this position here, it could potentially slide out of the way and the tire could fall down on me while I have my hands under there. Obviously, whenever you're doing something like this, you want to make sure you're as safe as possible. There we are. That's going nowhere. Now let's go ahead and grab onto a nice long pry bar for leverage. We're gonna take this pry bar, put it down and along the ground, just underneath the wheel. Now without sticking my fingers underneath here in any way, I'm just gonna go ahead and start prying up and down on this and we're gonna be paying attention for ball joint or wheel bearing movement. I feel a little bit of movement, but I also hear an audible clunk. Now that we check the lower, let's also confirm the upper. I'm just gonna go ahead and spin this so I have a nice clear access up to the top of my rotor. I'll carefully use my bar. If you have some nice rims that you're worried about scuffing, just put a rag or something in between. Obviously these ones right here, I'm not super worried about. So essentially right here, I'm pressing up against the top of the rotor and underneath the bottom of this rim. I'm gonna go ahead and try lifting up and down on this and we're feeling to see if we can feel any movement in and out. Oh, that's tight. Holy moly. Okay, so that's tight for sure. Now let's do a little side to side action. This is checking your tie rods essentially. I think I feel a little something there, but not really anything too bad. Now let's move along to checking that wheel bearing. For that, we're gonna be paying attention to this center area right here. I'm pretty much listening. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Let's give it a quick spin. Start listening. I'm listening for a howl, a whine, a grind, or anything the like. Let's get it going again. Oh, this sounds good. And of course, it spins freely. Now you just saw how to check this side of the front end, do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle. Now the next thing that we're going to do is hop inside the passenger compartment of the vehicle. What I need to do is go ahead and grab onto that steering wheel and I'm going to go ahead and shake it side to side while the wheels are still on the ground. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to check for steering lash, essentially how much the steering wheel can move without the wheels that are on the ground pivoting at all. Now with that said, when I'm doing this, what we're going to be looking for is the steering shaft, which is generally located under the hood. We're just kind of looking near where the joint is just to see if there's any movement in that area. Aside from that, if you have a pitman arm or even an idler arm, now's the time to check those as well. So I'll go ahead and grab onto this steering wheel. And now let's give it a shake side to side. Now that feels fine. Now we didn't find the particular issue that could cause this pull to the left, so of course we're going to want to continue with our diagnosis. I'm going to move along to checking the brakes. Now to start checking the brakes, it's going to be easiest if you can get all four wheels up and off the ground at the same time. If you need to use some jack stands or whatever you might happen to have, just make sure you're safe as possible. The first thing I'm going to check is for brake drag, of course. If you have brake drag, that's going to cause friction and of course it's going to cause a pull of some sort. So since I was here before, I'm just gonna start with this. We'll give it a little spin. We know that this side is good because we checked it with the front end. We also checked the right front, but I'm always gonna check all of them just in case. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, it looks like we found an area where this pulling issue might be coming from. We're gonna have to go ahead and tear this apart and have a look at what's going on. Let's remove this center cover. <coughs> Get the lug nuts off of here. Of 
course, you're going to want to have a look at the braking surface of your rotor. You want to essentially just look and see if it looks like it's discolored in any way. If it looks like it's blue or red or pretty much anything the like, that essentially means that this area has been overheating while you've been driving. Now that we have the wheel off of there, let's just have a closer look at the brakes. Essentially what we're looking for is any damage that might jump out to us that tells us that there's going to be a problem here. We're looking for moisture or anything the like. Once you've taken a quick look at it, the next thing that I always like to do is go over to the bleeder screw right here. Generally you're going to find some sort of protective boot on there, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop that off. We can set that aside, you're definitely going to want to reuse that. Now we can open up the bleeder screw. When we do this, we're going to be paying attention to see if we see a steady trickle of fluid coming out of this area. If you see fluid coming out with a steady trickle, generally that means that you have a good flex hose, which is what we're essentially trying to confirm. If you open this up and nothing comes out, you might potentially have an issue with this, or of course you might have an issue with the flex hose where it's collapsed. There we are. Get that open a little bit. Now as you can see, I've got a nice steady trickle of fluid, which tells me that gravity is pulling the fluid all the way down from the master cylinder down to this point. I can go ahead and close this off and we'll put that boot back on. After that, let's just go ahead and use a pry bar. We're going to carefully get in between this area and gently pry up against the rotor. Essentially, we just want to see if we can get this caliper to move. <clears throat> Not so much. Okay. The next thing that I always like to do is go ahead and remove the caliper. Now, for this one in particular, I actually have to take off the entire caliper bracket from the axle. So what I'm going to do is just remove my two caliper bracket bolts. We'll slide the caliper out of the way. Once I get this one so it's fairly loose, I'll go ahead and fully remove the other one. This one's easier to get to. Now we can go ahead and try getting the caliper off of here. As you can tell, it's pretty much stuck on there. I'm gonna see if I can pry it off. Oh yeah, that's really gripping on there. Okay, now we'll just go ahead and set this up here. The next thing that we're going to check while we have this off is actually the pads themselves. We essentially want to make sure that they can move around inside this caliper bracket. Now I can just go ahead and take these pads, I can move them around all willy nilly, so I'm not worried about these pads being the culprit. Typically if the pads were stuck inside the bracket and you step on the brake, it's going to squeeze the pads directly up against the rotor, but they're not going to be able to release on their own when you release the brake pedal, so it's going to be causing constant friction on the brake rotor, and of course that's going to cause some drag. The pads aren't the issue. The next thing that we're going to pay attention to that involves the pads is of course to take a peek at the pad material itself. What we're looking for is to see if it looks like it's contaminated or swollen or damaged in any way. Essentially, if you see any fluid, like what I happen to see on this caliper in this area, that could potentially be contaminating the pad up along this area, which of course might cause it to hang up or even overheat. So now I'm going to take you over to the bench. I have a caliper sitting on it that I can go over with you. It's more of a demonstration so you can have a look at exactly different areas that you want to pay attention to when you're inspecting your caliper. Now for this, I'm just going to go ahead and take it right around. And the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and remove our caliper slider bolts. Carefully remove the caliper from the bracket, assuming it wants to come off. All right, so that was definitely stuck on there. Now this area right along here is your caliper piston. Some calipers are going to have one piston in the center, others might have two, or you might even find that you have pistons on both sides of this area. But what you want to pay attention to is of course the boot area. On this one I can tell that it's actually ripped wide open. You can also tell that there's some sort of fluid in there that might be leaking out, or of course it might even be some water or something that made its way in. Either way, it's not a good sign. You of course want to check both of your pistons, or however many you have, and just inspect them and make sure you don't have the same issue here. So we can tell that this boot right here is ripped, but of course you're going to want to inspect all of your boots. Maybe you find that one's good, but the other one isn't so much. Anytime you happen to see that there is a ripped boot, that's a good reason to just go ahead and replace the entire caliper. Of course, you can check out 1AAuto.com for something like that. So the next thing that I want to do, we'll go with the assumption that the boot looks like it's good, so we're going to go ahead and try to push in these pistons. Now, if you have a single piston, you can go ahead and just press in one at a time. Of course, there's only one. But if you have multiple pistons, you have to push in both of them at the same time. So I'm just going to carefully try pushing these in. I want to see how much pressure it takes to try to force them in. These should go in very easily. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, either one of these pistons isn't going in or both of them isn't going in. Either way, the caliper itself is not functional, especially if I can't push it in with this tool. 
So at this point, I can go ahead and set this aside. And now let's continue on by talking about the caliper bracket itself. Essentially, we'll go with the assumption that you found that the caliper was OK, but now it's time to check that bracket. The first area that I always go to would be the caliper slider pins. That's the area that the caliper mounts right onto. This one in particular, I can tell that the boot slid off of the ridge where it's supposed to be sitting into, and there's a whole bunch of rust and corrosion and everything else inside this area. Typically, you can grab onto the sliders themselves, give them a little twist. They're going to want to twist right around. You can pull them in and out. They're supposed to be able to function properly and flow freely. This one right here is completely seized. Last thing that I want to check is those pads. Now, I know we took a look at the ones that were on the truck, but this caliper is completely different. Grabbing onto these pads, I can't move them around at all inside this bracket, and that's a cause for an issue as well. Looking at this pad, you can tell that it's completely frozen inside the bracket because of the way that it's wearing. You can tell that it's worn at an angle. This side right here has even less meat on it, and it's actually even worn down to almost metal to metal. That's obviously a very big issue. Okay, so now at this point, we talked about a whole bunch of different areas on your brake caliper that might be causing an issue where you're having a brake pull or a pull of some sort. Now for us in particular, our pull was pulling me to the left while I was driving. It wasn't while I was stepping on the brake. Let's go with the assumption that this caliper was frozen in the stuck on position. Essentially, when that's happening, if it's on the left side, that brake caliper is going to be holding on to the left side rotor, going to be causing the friction, trying to drag that left side of the vehicle, which of course is going to give me a little bit of a pull, especially if the brake caliper that has the issue is in the front. You're still going to feel it in the rear, as you saw, but it's something to think about. Also something to think about is if this brake caliper is frozen, but it's in the outward position or the relaxed position. Now, if this was to happen, this brake caliper right here isn't going to be doing its job when it comes time to trying to stop the vehicle. So essentially, you're going to feel a brake pull coming from the other side of the vehicle. The reason why that is, is because that caliper is going to be doing all the work of trying to stop that axle. So when that happens, it's going to be causing the friction. It's going to be pulling only on that one side, and it's going to try pulling you a little bit to the right. So now, let's go with the assumption that you checked your front end. That felt nice and tight. You went ahead and you checked your caliper. Also, fine. The next thing that we're going to want to check is what's going on behind that rear rotor. Let's have a look. Ah, yeah. That's definitely something's going on in there. Let's have a look at the back. Looking at the back of this area right here, I can see my e-brake cable where it connects onto the actuator. This area right along here is actually supposed to be a spring. Looking at it, it's completely contracted. So that essentially tells me that this pivot right here is in the holding position. Essentially, the e-brake is still thinking that it's supposed to be on, even though it isn't. A couple common reasons why your emergency brake might be stuck in the on position could have something to do with your emergency brake cables, which lead from the front all the way to the back of each of the rear wheels. Commonly, the sheathing on it can get worn if it's hitting up against something at some point, and moisture makes its way inside, and then it freezes up the cable so it can't flow properly. This is essentially the way it should function. Now at this point, I've got this lever so it's freed up a little bit here. We can go ahead and turn this rotor. Let's get it off. Oh. So now let's have a look inside this area right here. You can see the e-brake actuator. Now this piece right along the back side and this piece right there should be located pretty closely up against each other. Essentially, if it looks just like this, the e-brake thinks that it's on. It's pushing out this rearward shoe right here and you can tell that it has a nice big gap from inside this area. So if that's the case, it's trying to push these shoes out and towards where it's going to hit up against the rotor, and that's what's going to cause the issue where it's hanging up, and of course we have our uh, brake pole and everything else. Also looking at the shoes, you just want to take a look and make sure you don't see anything that looks like this. You can tell I have a lot of moisture and debris built up in this area. Essentially that tells me that there's contamination in this area. It could obviously be from the caliper seeping and making its way into this area, but it's less likely than the fact that there could be an issue with the axle seal causing contamination on the e-brake shoes. And now we know why we had that pole to the left. We had the e-brake shoes hitting up against the inside of this area right here, causing excessive friction, and of course that's what was causing the pole. All right. So now at this point, I have this vehicle back together and back on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and get it out of here. I'm going to go on 1AAuto.com, order all the parts I need. They're going to be shipped to me fast and free so I can go ahead and get them installed. Now, I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it interesting. If it's something you want to share with a friend, go ahead and share it with them. It would mean everything to me. Of course, if you like the video or love the video, go ahead and smash on that like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.